Welcome, everyone. It's the 9th of June. This is the GitLab Plugin Modernization uh, Project Meeting. So, Harsh, I've got items on the agenda, including pending pull requests, any discussion, if we need to have some discussion from last week. I put mentor checklist on there as a standing thing, just in case, and an open question, is this time still working for everyone? Are there other things you'd like to put on the agenda? Like uh, about the midterm evaluation, like my uh, end semester oh. examinations or classes. So I right, right. Okay, it. that's a very important one. So upcoming, upcoming schedules and events. Very good. Okay, so midterm evaluation, midterm, mid or no, not let's see, mid. It, you said examinations for university are coming, right? Yeah. Dates and preparation. Good. Okay. And you mentioned midterm evaluation. Are you talking about the project or? Yeah. Okay. All right. Midterm evaluation for the project. Okay. Like the presentation uh, that we had to give. So that was clashing. Oh, that will clash with your examinations. Like almost. Um, okay. All right. Good to know. All right. So we may need to have you record it separately and yeah. play it back or something, do it earlier so that it doesn't collide with your exams. That examinations take first priority. Okay, good. So upcoming I, schedules I, and events is a good topic. Any other topics you want on the agenda? Nope, other than this GitLab also announced it's GitLab 16, which did some breaking here and there in the GitLab plugin, and that is also going to be fixed, I think, in this project only. Other than this, I can't think of anything. Okay, so well, let's put that one. I would love to hear from you on GitLab 16 breaking changes because you've you're probably the first first explorer of that. So let's put it there. Great. Anything else for the agenda? Not from my side. Like I would like to discuss more on these topics. Oh, you, and we will. Great. Okay, so let's go through them then. First, check on the action items. So we had said a UML diagram, but decided that was lower priority than your work on the pull requests. I assume it's still lower priority. Are you okay with that, yeah. Arsh? Great. Yeah. And of creating a snapshot of version six of GitLab for J. Um, did, this, I think, is also lower priority because we we assume yeah. you're using the 5.x version. Yeah. Okay, it good. It is All right. a lower priority. But uh, I tried doing that and this was a complete mess for me. Like oh. uh, I was not able to build a snapshot because uh, like, first of all, I was using the uh, MacBook. So I had to update the uh, GitLab or the library to have the Docker Maven plugin of Fabric 8 to work. Like after doing that, the integration tests of the library started to fail. And I and Chris, I, I and Chris were trying to fix that. I was not able to fix it. And Chris was also tired after a lot of stuff that we tried to do and it was it was a bad experience overall like we couldn't so i just filed an issue in the gitlab for the github account and i don't know like how will i do that like i tried it on my m1 chip like it did not really work so i also tried it on gitpod and it still didn't work like that was okay like i was so not able to do for, it if we're just deploying a snapshot it might be easier to skip the tests because you don't need to run the tests what, were you having an issue compiling it or running the tests? Like it was compiling, but the tests were not running. Like I was doing Maven clean install and it was not working. Yeah, it might be easier to just skip the tests for the purposes of creating the snapshot because the point of this is not, the point of this is not for us to, you know, do a release of the GitLab for J library, which, which, if we, you know, if we were actually doing a release of that ourselves, we would care about the tests not working, but if we're just getting a snapshot for our own internal use, um, it, it, it would be fine to skip the tests, I think. Yeah, that, that's actually really great. Otherwise, I would have been a dead meat. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, Anything else on the action items before we go on to schedules and events? No, I don't think so. I tried anything else in a week except the pull request, of course. Right. Okay. So, so tell us what are your examination dates and your preparation time, so we make sure we've like, got that. Uh, July sixth to July thirteenth is my examination, and I think the midterm evaluation, uh, midterm presentation is also clashing in that time period. 
so i may need to record the presentation okay so let me let me do a quick look at the where would i look probably the jenkins calendar or or let's 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 just let's not take time in the meeting i'll double check it this is something i can do separately a uh, mark to check the the presentation date uh discuss alternatives with john mark with the org admins because I, I think they will agree wholeheartedly your examinations are much more important than you doing a presentation we we want the presentation but we could do a recording of it earlier there are all sorts of ways we could consider doing it okay did anything else on upcoming schedules All right. Tell us about GitLab 16's breaking release and breaking changes. What have you learned? Like, what did they do? What what they did is like for making the sub projects work better and to improve the performance of GitLab server, they introduced delimiters, which are actually creating problem when a, when the user is trying to click on when when the user is trying to go to the changes that they committed using the Jenkins build changes section, they are redirecting to a wrong page. So I'll have to. Uh, correct the URL structure for that. So that's like others. No, that's the only thing that they did that I know that the issues were raised in the GitLab plugin. So I will have to solve them also. That issue would affect users of REST easy too, would it not? Yeah, yeah. It's it will be affecting REST easy as well as GitLab actually. Yeah. So this seems like it's kind of an, another one of those orthogonal changes to this effort in the sense that. You know, we we could improve this, um, but I would feel I would feel strongly that such an improvement would be done in, in a separate PR from the one that yeah. migrates to GitLab for J. So I didn't really do it in the this PR which I made regarding the first milestone of uh, of migrating the resource calls. I'll be I'll be making an another PR for this. Okay. Time. So and that other PR we could we could conceivably merge and release so that we fix it for GitLab 16 users already, right? That doesn't, I think, I've, have I understood yeah. you correctly? Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. When you say delimiters, are you talking about pagination of the REST API? I mean, like, did, no, they, uh, did they add a page number to it? Or I'm not sure what you're referring no, no, no. to. Like, uh, they added a dash in between just so that they could separate the projects and sub-projects. That's, that's the only thing that they did that I found out just to improve the performance of the GitLab server. Like, I don't know how they are doing it, but yeah, that's what they did. Well, that's, yeah, that seems like a pretty easy thing for us to adjust yeah. to. Right. Well, and, and it seems like we will probably need to somehow do it conditionally based on the version of GitLab that they're using because the old one doesn't respond that way. 15 and earlier still honor the old URL. Is that right? Like I have to research on that. Like oh, if I'm okay. trying to like if I'm trying to click on the old URL, it's automatically directing to the newer URL. So I'll have to research a bit on that. I didn't really work on that. I worked more on the PR. This yeah, week. So, yeah. No problem. And you did the right thing. That that was the PR is certainly the more important thing. If we needed to, I suspect others could do this change if you're if you're feeling like, hey, you you don't have the time to work on this one. Yeah, it's a pretty easy chain. Like it's not that tough. Good. Okay. Anything else on the GitLab 16 breaking changes then? Nope. Okay. Next topic then. Pending pull requests that need discussion. So I see three, but I may have them in the wrong order for what you would prefer for discussion. Is there which like, which of these would you like to start first? Like uh, ignore the draft PRs that I made, uh, like the main PR, the normal PR, which I did, I think we need to review this. I also okay. added a Docker-based functional test suite, like I adapted them also, but it was a stretch goal, but I just forgot about it and just added it anyways. So like uh, I am waiting for a review for this. Okay, and so this 1501, this is the one that's not draft and you're ready, for, you feel like you're ready for review. Yeah. Good. All right. Okay. And, uh, and so the tests are now compiling with this version, right? Yeah, I adapted the tests also. So they are working at least on my side. 
and Chris also confirmed that they are working. Yeah, yeah so they, they are compiling. I don't think we're running them yeah. yet in the CI build. Are you running them locally? I think we not? are running them. Not so, as far as I can see. I, I would be surprised if CI was running. Oh, it's running. Oh, yeah, it's, these are just the injected tests, aren't they? No. Oh, right. The CI build is not running the GitLab tests yet. Um, so if if they are working, then if they are working, then we could re-enable them in this pull request. Um, but if they aren't, then um, it's Mark. It's in the POM file, not in this. Oh, so file. I can't. I can't just do a replay. Okay, yeah. got it. No cheating. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, if they are, if they are not just compiling but running, then we could re-enable them in this PR by basically reverting the changes that I had originally made to disable them. Um, and and if they aren't work, if they're not working, then it would be fine to re-enable them in a separate change. Um, but we, but I think we would consider that an important thing to re-enable them before this project branch is put back to the main branch. Yeah, so, so Harsh, would you like to be the one who re-enables the tests in that, in your pull request? Are you comfortable like how to do that? Time. I don't really know. I have to start. Well, let's you, let's. All you need to do is the way oh, Basil. You can describe it. Oh yeah. All you need to do is run a diff between the project branch and the main branch. And the only the only difference right now between the two is the code that I committed to disable compiling and running the tests. So that would just need to be reverted. Yeah. It's it's basically this one and a predecessor okay. to it right and this one which as Basil said do it do it with a diff between the master branch and your working branch you'll see what the change is okay i'll revert it and try uh, and see if it's passing or not now don't be dismayed if if you could just at mention me or Basel when you do that because i suspect you don't have permission to run to execute a Jenkins. Oh no, this is not a Jenkins file change, is it, Basel? Yeah, this is a code that. change. That's right. Okay. Forget I didn't say anything harsh. Please ignore the last sentence I said. It was nonsense. Okay, good. Yeah, and 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 you know, you you would you would want to run them locally before you try to do it in C in CI. Right. Uh, and there's there's no there's no pressure, you know, if they if they aren't working locally yet, there's no pressure to do it in this PR. Even just getting them to compile is a first step that's positive. So we could always, you know, do another PR after this one to make sure that they're actually executing, not just compiling. So, uh, well, you know, if, if if we're already there, that's great. And if we're not there, then we'll get there, you know, and we'll get there soon. Right. Like I'll confirm. I'll confirm with Chris. Like we were working on the test cases. I shared with him uh, in the draft PR and he said that it was working. So I think he will review it first before I actually enable the test. Great. So compare with the master branch and undo the differences uh, in the in the POM file. Good. Okay. So, so have you, uh, with, with 1501, have you, um, I remember last week we were running into some problems connecting to the GitLab server. You were getting the TCP timeout. So have you been able to work through that since we last talked? Yeah, it was working for me. At least it was, I tried, I also tested it interactively, like not that heavily, but at least the basic features I tested it and it was working for me fine. Okay, great. Maybe I can share the HPI file with you guys so that you can also test it. Like I didn't really test it that heavily because I wanted to test things very heavily after the webhook thing was implemented, but still you can do it. I can share the HPI file for that. Yeah, that sounds exactly right because we, for this initial pull request, our goal is to get things you know off the ground, not to make it perfect. So, um, you know, uh, that, that sounds exa like exactly what we were looking for. Now, I, given that you're already already building 
this is the pull request, right, Harsh? This is 1501. And here's the HPI file that it generates. So we've actually already got the HPI file yeah. ourselves. Oh. So you don't need to share right. it with us. We've got it available and can put it into our own our own use. I can put it into my my development environment very easily. And what, what are you using for the GitLab server? Are you uh, are you using the official Docker image or some other way to uh, install GitLab? Like I, I use the Docker image also and also use the, uh, the GitLab.com for some minor testing. Like mostly the Docker image, that slow little thing that. Well, sorry, what was the second thing you mentioned? That's not the Docker like image? The like what I uh, what I used to do with GitLab.com, like oh, okay. the actual server that, that they are using. I also use that for version four testing and GitLab, so GitLab server for version three testing, like my Docker instance. Okay, great. I'll try, to review, I'll try to review this today or Monday, but I think this looks uh, this looks very promising. So, yeah, and I'll 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 try to do some interactive testing with it as well and look at it. Uh, Basil's reviews are are much more powerful, but I'm happy to be a user and happy to do good good checks to see one more person exploring it is a good thing. Yeah. All right. Now, did you want any discussion on 1491? Or is this one? No, uh, no this one's this draft. One, you said yeah. you don't. Just okay. for reference. Great. Yeah. So draft pull requests. They've really been doing what we wanted, which is give you a place to quickly share with us without worrying too much about what it is. Yeah. Good. Very good. Okay. Good. Any other items you want to discuss on those pull requests, Harsh? The four, 1497 is the uh, is the fix for the Docker integration tests. That, yeah, I was working I, on the test. So I, I think I remember these because I think I tried to run them when I inherited this plugin two years ago, and I don't think they ever worked, or at least as far as I can tell, the last time that they did work was more than three years ago. Um, so it'd be, that would be really nice to get to get that working again. Um, like it would it's certainly give us a lot a more confidence. Goal for us. I'm sorry? Like, it was a stretch goal for the project, but I just forgot about it, and I started working, in, uh, working on it. And then in the between, I just realized, like, after five or five or six tests were left, that this is not what I want to do because I was constantly facing problems because I changed the client's uh, client configuration. So I had to add the GitLab rule for getting the actual GitLab uh, client from the Docker instance that I was using. So I was into some mess and I just, it just striked me that what I was doing. Okay, but so th this is, like. so this is not ready for review or would you like some comments on this one as well? No, I think it's, it's ready. Like you oh, should okay. see it. Can we look at the yeah. changes? Can we look at the changes to the um, POM file that are in that draft? You bet. So this is, uh, yeah. So it's updating the Docker Maven plugin, which is which is good. Uh, or actually, it looks like it's actually down. Yeah, it looks like it's actually downgrading it. Um, and then, what about the compose file? Um, like it's downgrading um, in the draft PR. It's not in the actual PR yet. In the actual right. PR is on the normal version. Right. So yeah, it looks yeah, and, and and it looks like we've got some changes to the compose file. Yeah, I mean this like, is like uh, this, this was for the like uh, spot bug changes that Chris did. Yeah. So, uh, and and did you get any of the did you get any of the integration tests to pass when they were previously failing with this new configuration? Like Chris we're not tried them and he, uh, yeah, Chris tried them and he told me that they were passing. Like I was getting some like job migrated issues. That's why it was not passing on my machine. But Chris said that it is passing on his machine. So I am counting on him. Like, but uh, for me, I think some of them were failing. Like, not more than four or five, I guess. Some yeah, but I think there's, I think there's only four or five to begin with. Um, 
And I think the last time I looked at this, they were all failing. <laughs> um, I, I would be, even not fail, that's for I, sure. Well, I'm, I'm talking about the the Docker based tests, not the uh, the regular because the, the regular ones are, are fine on the main branch. It's only the Docker ones that yeah. that are not working. And uh, I don't I, I don't mean to uh, doubt that you that you ran them successfully, but um, no, you should be doubting me. <laughs> But yeah, no, I, I'm not I, joking. I, I was having pain in that. I, I, uh, I would be very shocked if they passed without changes to the tests themselves, uh, which it doesn't seem like you've done here, but I could be wrong. Like, um, in the are, are there are there changes that you made to the Docker based Java tests themselves? Like the integration test yeah. you're talking about. So, Mark, you can open the test utility, like he's talking about those things and yes. the publisher classes. Well, it's not the it's not it's not the test utilities it's the um it's the tests themselves I, yeah it's, i forget where they are but i mean i'll find them the integration test would be down i guess yeah it's, yeah i forget what they're called but it's like oh gitlab it or something yeah gitlab it that that's cool of course it's hard to search for that because gitlab itself contains the string it yeah it's their integration gitlab it so I, I, yeah, should, yeah. I should see it on screen, but I don't. Is that it's what you Oh, a, there it is. GitLab IT. It's this just one. there. Yeah. Yes, okay. Do, do we have to, so do we have to change this class other than to adapt it to the new API? No, I just adapted it. Yeah, hmm. I, would, I would be pretty surprised if this test was passing without more deep changes than this. At least last time, yeah. I, last time I tried to run it, it looked like it needed a lot of work. Um, so, do, so have you run this particular one locally in the past or, or you're not sure? I'm not sure from me. I'm not sure from my side. Yeah. 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 So this this is a, I think this is the one that needed work, if I remember. And um I, I I started I started climbing this mountain one time and I still have my uh I still have my branch. And the first thing that I the first thing that I tried to do was if you this integration test was using GitLab version eight. So I was trying to uh, with, before I even started debug, before I even started debugging it, I was trying to uh, to use a more recent version of GitLab, and um, I had I had made some changes to the POM file um, to update the the Docker image to use to use a more recent version. I was getting I remember getting a little farther with a more recent version, but still having things to debug in that integration test. So. Um, you know, if I were if if I were to if you were going to spend more time on this, then I would start by trying to use a more recent version of GitLab before sinking a lot of time into debugging the really old version. Um, it, it's it, debugging the older version is harder and more time consuming and and ultimately unnecessary because no one uses it. So right um, when I you know when I was looking at this, I thought I thought it would be more productive to start by upgrading the Docker image and then figure out how to get this test to pass. Now, I, I succeeded in doing neither of those two things in the four hours that I spent doing this. So I think it would probably take a lot more than uh, four hours to do that. Um, like so, I take my words back that tests are not working. Yeah there, yeah. there should be some problem. Yeah. So anyway, that's uh, that's the way that I would suggest doing it. At least they're adapted. Great. Yeah, getting them to compile is is a positive thing, absolutely. Um, so, but yeah, uh, they've been disabled. And they, running them has been disabled as long as I can remember, which is m many years now. So, that's pretty much the definition of technical debt, right there. Yes. Okay. So, so this one is likely not not ready the 1491 not ready unlikely to be passing uh needs more work not now right don't do that work now it's no harm that you started it harsh but we're perfectly fine not doing that work do i understand that correctly yeah i think i should be on the foundation side than the testing side like it the project goal is to make the work the make the plugin work interactively not to add the docker based functional test it's a stretch goal right very good okay good 
All right. Anything else on pending poll, re poll requests or other discussion topics around pending poll requests? From my side, I think that's what I did in this week. Like I was pretty slow, but yeah, the GitLab instance that I use is very, very slow. Okay. Like any other discussion we need to have on this one on review and results from the review? Are are you feeling comfortable, Harsh? Are there things that we need to do better for you? What any any insights or things you want to share there? No, I don't think so. I'm, I am having any problem. Like I'm waiting for the review so that I can improve upon them. Like I, it should be having some problem right there. So yeah, no Great. problem for me. Okay, and Basil, any counsel or advice you want to give on, on that topic? No, this is good. Uh, uh, I got everything that I needed out of this conversation. I think I'm ready to look more deeply at the code. Excellent, thank you. So the next topic then for me was just a safety check of our checklist. And as, oh, oh good, and this gives us dates, right? So midterm evaluations begin submitting July 10. How does that collide with your calendar now, Harsh? It is, oh, it's right in the middle of it. Okay, so you'll need to be able, you'll need to have that midterm evaluation ready well before that. Yeah. So that you can submit it during your exam period, but not spend a lot of time on it. Okay, good. All right, now where did I put that page? Okay, then July 14, that's when the evaluations are due. And we don't have a date yet, or at least I haven't seen a date for the presentations. Okay, so those we've talked about at least those dates and the risk they are to be sure we're ready for them. Okay, good. All right. That's all that I had on mentor checklist review. Uh, next question was, is this meeting time still okay for everybody? Harsh, this isn't too late for you. Are you, no. you still okay with this time of day? And Basel, does this time still work okay for you? Great. All right. That's all the topics I had. Any other topics we need to discuss in our session today? Sorry, say that again, Harsh. I don't have anything left. Oh, good. Okay, great. Then we are set. I'll stop the recording. Recording will be available in a...